Okay, I'm going to try to get as far as I can today. Um, looking at pictures that I've gathered, I haven't got this wrong, uh, the muscle structure in that back hip, so I'm not going to do anything different. I'm not going to cut off the uh, clay I got on there because, quite honestly, it looks good the way it is. So I'm going to stick with that and uh, try to figure out where I'm going to start working. I might start working on the uh, tail. Why not? There's my armature for my tail, which will be a piece of wire. It's a piece of uh, bonsai wire. And the reason I'm using it is because it's easily bent. It's just aluminum. And uh, it's going to work out just fine. Yeah. Time to play with some clay. this in as far as I can. There we go. Fill the hole with clay. got the armature for the uh, tail in. I don't know if I'm going to sculpt the tail yet, but it's at least there. And uh, we'll come to that uh, probably later. All right, I'm going to redo this hoof because it's got to be flat on the ground. It can't be in the position it's in. Now it's time to start adding clay to the uh, the hoof. Sometimes as a sculptor, you feel like you're a surgeon because <laughs> you're getting tools for this and that. You feel almost like you should be calling out scalpel, forceps. You know, that's what you feel like sometimes.
this is where it gets hard. You gotta try to reach under and around the sculpture to get to something underneath the sculpture and on a different uh, side of the uh, clay. You have to be a bit of a contortionist to be a sculptor sometimes. All right, I'm just uh, going to make the uh, fur texture match the fur texture on the other side. The best I can. I'm using a, a rubber end of this tool. See it in there and do this. I'd love to know how buffalo stay cool in the summertime, or if they do because of the fur, the heavy fur on their shoulders and and uh, back and neck and head. I just wonder if there's a reason physically for that. Because uh, it seems like be, it's like wearing a fur coat in the winter, I mean in the summertime, and especially when it gets hot. I mean, it can get up in the hundreds up here in the prairies of Montana and up in Yellowstone Park. It can get up to over a hundred sometimes, but mostly it's in the 90s because it is high altitude. But still, it gets really hot, a little too warm for a uh, fur coat, I would think. I got this image off of uh, one of that uh, gentleman's uh, YouTube channel videos, and uh, they were rounding up uh, buffalo in the western part of Texas, and this huge, m monstrous uh, bull buffalo was just magnificent. They were putting it into a uh, a metal trap or what do they call it where the things coming uh, against the neck of the, the buffalo to keep it in position so they can uh, give it medicine and you know whatever else they do and uh, just look at the the hair sticking up it, it's almost like a feathered headdress this uh, buffalo had above his head it was just amazing um, I'm not going to do that because I think that's might be too much. I don't know. But anyway, I got this off that one of those videos and it's great. I'm just going to block in this hair that's going to go on his forehead.
this is that smooth uh, skin around the eye. Where I live here in Montana, southwest Montana, is where the uh, buffalo used to roam until the uh, Easterners started moving into the valley here. This was a major hunting ground during the summer months for a lot of the tribes. They just kind of like a, a UN come together <laughs> and uh, would gather their meat for the summer, for the winter. And so the elk would uh, be down here on the prairie and so would the buffalo. When I first moved here back in the uh, 80s, I was walking just outside my house in the uh, flatland or on top of the uh, bluff and I found an old buffalo horn the shell of the horn um, the uh, horn is actually formed as a shell over and around the uh, skull of the uh, buffalo and there was an old buffalo horn shell laying in the tall grass, which meant that buffalo had to have died almost 150 years before. It's just amazing the history of this country that uh, no longer exists because of uh, civilization moving in. The uh, elk have a uh, area in the valley here about 40 miles south where they birth their uh, calves in the spring and it's on the prairie up on the top of the bluffs right near an old uh, buffalo jump. Uh, the buffalo jump is a cliff that uh, drops off from a flat area. The Indians before they had horses would stampede the uh, buffalo towards that cliff, they wouldn't be able to discern that the uh, cliff was there because it looked like continuous land. And they didn't realize that they were running off a cliff until they were right on the cliff. I think the TV series Into the West shows something like that right at the beginning of it of the first episode. But anyway. Well, this is going to have to do it for tonight. And I'll pick this up next week and uh, start working on his head a little bit more and try to figure out how I'm going to do the fur texture on his uh, forehead as you can see in this picture it's almost pointing straight out and that means i'm going to have to texture it in such a way that uh, it'll make it a little more expensive to uh, cast looking at this horn it looks like the horn's broken at the tip which i guess that could happen occasionally what a beautiful buffalo. All right. Good night, everybody. See you next, uh, see you next week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.